Hey, Joel, thanks for doing this. I hope you're doing well. Doing great. Thank you. Joel, I just want to ask you, uh, obviously, the league moved forward with the 17th game and the vote yesterday. I know that was nearly unanimous in terms of support of that, but just want to ask you uh, what your thoughts were about that, what, if any, apprehensions you had, and also just how much you think the NFL can get closer to normal and full capacity and kind of what we think of as the NFL experience this fall. Okay. I think I'll start with the second second part. Okay, sure. You know, we're preparing for normality, and that's that's our expectation. Um, it may be a walk before you can run process, but as we prepare for next season, we're pre preparing for normality and uh, all the excitement that comes along with it. The 17 games, I, I mean, I think as everyone knows, this is not something that just popped up. This has been a long time coming, a lot of discussions, a lot of work, um, a lot of groundwork laid and um, a lot of work with the player union to get to this point. So I think, you know, the feedback from fans over the last 24 hours has been really positive. Our fans are excited. And I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be great for the NFL. You know, this is the first time in almost five decades that this is something like this has changed. So we're looking forward to it. Thank you. We'll go over to Scott Reynolds. Hey, Joel, congrats on your Super Bowl championship and also the, the success of your uniform change. I'd like to get your thoughts on last year's uniform change, specifically the pewter jerseys. Get your thoughts on those, but also on possibly br bringing back the Bucko Bruce throwbacks that you had from 2009 to 12. Has there been any change in the league's one helmet rule that prevented you guys from, from doing the throwbacks because you're stuck with the pewter helmet? Yeah, on the throwbacks, you know, we're, we're constantly at the league's doorstep trying to get them to move so we can wear our throwbacks. We're not there yet, but, uh, you know, there's discussions going on. Hopefully at some point in the future that'll happen because I know how popular they are with our fans. But so on the uniform change last year, it was unbelievably well received and the pewter. I mean, people loved it, but it, it was great to to see a little more traditional look than we've had in the past. And I know our players like it, our fans, fans liked it. And, you know, it, it all worked out. It all went together well with the, with the Super Bowl championship. And also, you know, former Bucks running back James Wilder's uh, one of the franchise's all-time best offensive weapons, still holds a dozen franchise records, the all-time leading rusher in, in franchise history. Have you and the Bucks organization given any serious consideration to Wilder's candidacy for the Bucks Ring of Honor? Yeah, you know, all our great former players are considered. And, you know, as, as you've seen, we're, we do one or two every every year. And um, there's a lot of worthy candidates. So we're not going to rule anybody out in the near or, or, or not too distant future. Thank you. We'll go over to Jenna Lane. Hey, Joel, thank you so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. Um, I know so many fans are so eager to see their Super Bowl winning team in person. And so many of them have asked me, when are we going to be able to go to training camp again? When, when can we go to practices again? And obviously the league is, is kind of unveiling, um, you know, it's, it's plans for, you know, full capacity with stadiums, but, but have you guys had any discussions internally about what you guys will do for, for, tra for training camp? Yeah. We're, you know, we're discussing all that right now. And, and as you know, the world's such a, evolving and changing place day to day, week to week with the vaccinations, which are going very well. So we are talking about everything that we've done in the past. We hope to get back to normality sooner rather than later, but we've kind of like we've had everyone's had for the last year. It's kind of a week to week, month to month approach. But as I said, we're, you know, we want to be respectful of, of, of the global environment, but we're hoping to get back to normality as soon as we can, but at the appropriate time. And um, speaking of that, getting back to t normality, last year was such a challenging year for so many people, but your football team was able to go out. They were able to get Tom Brady and, and they were able to, you know, bring a lot of joy to a lot of people in this area who had been through so much. Can you just kind of put uh, the last several months, really the last year into words um, as to what that meant to you and, and your family on a personal note? Yeah, it, that's what made it extra special. I mean, with the backdrop of everything that was going on and to be able to provide that type of excitement and enjoyment to the community at a time where things are so difficult, words cannot, you know, express how special it made everything and how it made us feel. And to culminate at home in that boat parade, it was just 
it was all magical and at the right time. So it was great. Thank you. We'll go over to Ira Kaufman. Oh, I'm at Lowry Park Zoo. So this comes from a white rhino question. Um, Joel, talk a little bit about the development of the young players on this team from this particular coaching staff and how important that was uh, towards lifting the uh, Lombardi trophy. Yeah, our, our, you know, I can't say enough about our coaching staff and the job that they did in a very tough environment, developing the younger players, the blend of younger uh, veteran players and in the most difficult of environments. And every step of the way, whatever hurdle we faced, there was no complaining, <laughs> there was no moaning, there was just figuring out a way to, to do it, coach up, the, uh, coach up the players. And we just, we have a special, special, special group of coaches. And I can't uh, tell you how appreciative I am of all their hard work last year and everything they did. And we're just fortunate to have them all back, which is unique after a Super Bowl. And so we're, we're just very proud of everything they did. And Joel, you watched Tom Brady for two decades from afar. Now that you've observed them up close and personal, what'd you learn about number 12 this year? You know, you heard stories. And as you say, watched them from afar for many years, you heard things about them, but you never really realized something until you're around somebody or with somebody. And everything I heard was absolutely accurate. The person, um, Tom, works harder than anybody I've ever seen. His leadership was unbelievable. And, you know, his relationship with everybody and, and just the person he is, it, the, the whole package. And uh, we're so fortunate to have him on our team and had him last year to lead us. So, and it was just great to see somebody who puts in the effort, who's so dedicated. It's just an example of, of results come when you work hard and you're dedicated and uh, you're the person you are and you're true to yourself. So we're fortunate, our team's fortunate, the community's fortunate to have Tom Brady. Thanks, Joe. Okay, we're gonna go over to Kevin O'Donnell. Hey, Joel, congratulations on a really an outstanding year. Um, looking at the way you guys have won now two Super Bowls, there's a little bit of a similarities is the fact that you built really a core of a team, a really strong quality team and then brought a free agent quarterback in. And obviously Brad Johnson and, and Tom Brady are two different guys, but they were veteran guys. Do you think that might change the just the philosophy of the organization's thinking of maybe not drafting quarterbacks and using free agency as a way to uh, improve your team? Yeah, no, I, I, I hear what you're saying. I, you know, I don't know that that would define our philosophy as we go forward. It, yes, it did work in these two situations. It's kind of the way the team was built and the way the quarterback came in. But, you know, I think as you see, I saw on the other side of the field in the Super Bowl, there was a young quarterback who's leading his team and people do it that way as well. So, you know, we, we just haven't had that necessary opportunity um, where it's really worked for us to, to get to a championship that way. But I, I don't think this would define how we would do things, you know, going forward. There's been a lot of talk about how Tom has changed kind of the culture of the franchise. When you hear that, uh, what kind of pops into your mind about just that, that label? Well, it's absolutely true. I, I mean, you know, you hear it, you, you kind of wonder, can someone really change a culture that much? And absolutely. I mean, again, people lead by example. And when you see somebody who has been in the league that long and had that much success and still working as hard as anybody, you know, that, that rubs off. And, uh, and also an unselfishness that he brought to our team this, you know, this group of players, coaches, in all my years, I've never been around any group like this. The, the, the blend and the chemistry and the unselfishness that ran throughout that entire team and the coaching staff was unbelievable. Thank you. We'll go over to Mark Cook. Mr. Glazer, um, two quick questions. First of all, you, you talked about James Wander and in the Ring of Honor in general. Last year, Monty Kiffin was supposed to be inducted. Is the plan for this season, if everything works out with COVID, for him to be um, in the Ring of Honor at a game this year? And when do you expect an announcement on that? Yeah, I, you know, that's why things happened the way it did last year and we, we deferred it. Um, so that would be the plan. And, you know, I'm sure 
when the schedule comes out and uh, there'll be more details um, in the not too distant future. And, and just one other quick question. Um, I know that you and your family were very close to Jameis Winston and we haven't really talked to you or, or anybody in the family since the decision was made. How difficult was it personally for you? Because I'm sure you were and you and your family were part of that decision to, to, to move on. How difficult was it personally for you and, and your family to see a guy like Jameis Winston who was here for five years and, 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 and did a lot for the franchise, but not be able to get him over the hump. How difficult was it to, for the franchise to actually cut ties with him personally for you? you know, anytime you have a player on your team and you, you know, you always develop relationships and a person who works hard and does everything you ask and, and gets out there in the community, it, it's always difficult when they leave and you see them go somewhere else. So whether it's Jameis or any, any other player, um, you, you always want to see him go on and, and you know, do good things because you get to know him on a, a personal level. And so we got to know him and um, wish, always wish him nothing but the best. Thank you. We'll go over to Steve Isbitz. Joel, where do you think you've improved as an ownership group over the last few years? Well, you know, when you've been through all different types of seasons, um, and you see over time what works necessarily and doesn't work. You learn, you, you always learn. And uh, I, I think that, you know, we've just kind of amped up what we've always done is, is try and be as supportive as possible with the people um, on the front line and also be patient. And I think, you know, you, you see threads of that in our Super Bowl team, patience, led to a component of, of, of the victory. So you're always learning and uh, there's things along the way. And I, I just think you gain knowledge every year about how to deal with different situations that may not be so public. And I think you saw some of the results this year. And as far as uh, Jason Light and his overall performance and his team and sort of a change in philosophy to having dead money down the road with the salary cap and all sorts of voidable years, things that fans read about to win right now. Uh, can you talk about sort of what seems like a change in philosophy and maybe just a little bit of a change of how you run things? Yeah. You know, I think there's a little bit of a misconception about that. I think if you look at the contracts we've done and some of the longer term contracts, you know, they're players that we expect to be with us. And, you know, there's been a little um, thing done here or there. But, you know, when we look out to the future and where the cap will continue to grow and the team we have and the players we've extended, yes, maybe some of the structure has changed, but we do have an eye to the future. The same token, we do feel that there is a window now and we want to, you know, it's all about winning championships. So we want to give it our best shot, but we definitely have an eye to the future. We do not believe that we're causing terrible problems in the future. And if you, again, if you dig deep into the players that we have given long-term contracts to, they are players we expect to, to be with us. Thanks. Go over to Scott Smith. Hi, Joel. Thank you for your time. Um, part of the announcement of the enhanced schedule with the 17th game was also the changes to how the international games will be set up with each team being committed to at least one in an eight year span as the host of the international committee or the chairman, I mean, uh, can you explain how that's important in trying to grow the international game? Yeah. You know, the, the NFL has a focus on growing internationally. It's been focused on it for many years. And now I think kind of the NFL is going through an, another, another stage of development. And with the 17 game schedule, it enabled a more structured approach, a more long-term approach where everybody will participate and play once every eight years. And that, you know, that, that's great for growing the game internationally. We have fans throughout the world. There's a lot of excitement throughout the world. And this will just help build on a lot of the great work that the league has done in the past and its goal of continuing its global growth. We're going to go over to Joey Knight. Joel, there obviously were some very significant upgrades and renovations to Raymond James uh, recently by the same token. It's nearing a quarter of a century in age. Do you think this facility is sustainable for the long term or for lack of a better term, adequate for the long term? Yeah, you know, the work we did a few years ago really uh, 
well received. It's brought the facility. It's in it's in very very good shape, and it's you know you we go to all the different stadiums, and our stadium is fan friendly. Our fans love it. You know we get a lot of people from out of town, always rave reviews. So you know you always want to keep updating the stadium. There's always more to be done. Things change. Things evolve. Fan experience is more important than ever. So you know we will keep doing things to to update that stadium to update Raymond James Stadium. But uh, we, we feel we have a very good facility, but you always have to look at uh, improving it and upgrading it, and we will. Okay, we're gonna go over to Jenna Lane. We have time for a few more. Hey, Joel, um, one of your father's greatest legacies um, in the NFL will be that he helped usher in a more diverse NFL, right? With hiring Tony Dungy. And that was highlighted again this year with Bruce Arians as coaching staff, um, not just with his coordinators, but also with with female staff members. Uh, what did that mean for you and your family to see uh, that that your forward thinking was was highlighted so much in this Super Bowl run and, and could potentially impact what a lot of other organizations do here pretty soon. Uh, you know, it was very meaningful. It's something that that we were happy that we're able to bring even further, expand our staff. And it, it's just so important and for everybody to see at the end that we're sitting there with the Vince Lombardi trophy um, with such a great staff, diverse staff. It's always been meaningful to us and we will continue to try and advance um, diversity in, in our organization. Thank you. We're gonna go to Greg Allman and then close out with a question from Scott Reynolds. Hey Joel, we, we heard from you guys on the podium in Green Bay and certainly here in Tampa in accepting the championship, but wanted to ask you, uh, if there are moments you can share that are the most special for you in this championship run and what you'll remember most when you think about this team and what they did. You know, I, I don't think there's any one moment, you know, back in the last Super Bowl when Rondi intercepted that pass, you know, that stands out to me. It, it's just more the whole environment, the backdrop. But again, I go back to this group of players and coaches and the the unselfishness. I, I just, I just have never been around a group of players and coaches that if you got the ball once in the game or caught one, didn't matter because we're trying to win. Um, everybody was happy for everybody. And I, I know that always comes with winning, but it was like that from the start and um, just culminating at home. I, I just think walking the streets of Tampa, the Super Bowl week and the smiles on everybody's faces probably was the most meaningful in the whole run and, and, uh, and for our organization and the community. So not, not really one moment. It was just a collection of moments throughout the season. Thank you. All right. Our last one will come from Scott Reynolds. Joel, I know we only get the opportunity to speak to you about once a year. And I know owning and operating the Buccaneers is a family affair between you and Brian, Darcy and Ed. Uh, can you maybe update us on the roles each one of you play in the day-to-day -day operations or if any of those roles have changed or been enhanced over the recent years? No, I, not many changes. You know, we, we all have the different areas we focus on. But again, we're there to support everybody in the organization. And a lot of times, you know, the benefit of having a lot of family involvement, I think, for, for people in the organization is you know, we're connected and, and care. And uh, ultimately, I think you end up with better results in that. And, um, and so, you know, we have all, all different areas that, uh, that we focus on, but it's a collective effort, collective organizational effort. And so no, nothing, no big changes there. Thank you, Joe. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Glazer. I appreciate your time. And uh, thank you, uh, Tampa Bay media for, uh, for joining us today. Yep. Thank you very much.